Oh man. Just came back from my morning walk. Phew, it's like 53 out. So I have long pants on and it's blowing out there. So the wind chill makes it really feel chilly. For the past uh, three, four days, I've been doing a, a morning walk, uh, doing a couple miles up towards the John Stenson Lock, Stennis Lock, with um, Ron and Betty from Delta Blues. This is their home marina. And each morning they say, hey, you want to do a walk? Absolutely. I love it, love it, love it. So thank you, Ron and Betty. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is my last day here at the marina. And then I'm looking forward to anchoring out. Could be really extended. Could be a week, two weeks, three weeks. I don't know. So I'm going to try and button up things today and see what kind of trouble I can get into around the boat and then uh, head out in the morning. So let's get at it. There goes toes in the sand, heading out. And not golfing. They're heading out with them, heading south. 6.30 in the morning. Good morning from Columbus, Mississippi. And morning coffee talk with Michael. Uh, let's talk about what's going on. I am currently down on the lower edge of the river area of the loop. Made my way down to Columbus, Mississippi. I think I got here too soon. Um, if I'd done my research better, I would have found out that the months of October and November that Columbus Marina and Demopolis Marina, which are the two marinas that are just above Mobile, which is the area you want to stay out of because of all the hurricane uh, possibilities. Mobile, hurricane comes up in Mobile. If you're in there, a uh, boat could take on damage, obviously. So uh, the plan was is to get down to uh, Demopolis and hang out for a month. But because they give you a two-day limit during October and November, I am probably going to be on the hook for uh, maybe three weeks. Uh, the next jump will be into Demopolis November 1st. So for right now, I'm just going to be on the boat and um, waiting it out. This is currently uh, October 11th, 2024. So if you guys are watching this video and you're still up um anywhere from Chicago on down the Mississippi River area and thinking you want to get down here, be aware, October and November, two-day maximum at uh, Columbus Marina and Demopolis Marina. So I've been having a good time here on the river. It's beautiful. It's peaceful. It's in the middle of nowhere. Um, almost no traffic. I thought there was going to be more barge traffic. There's not river is peaceful. There's plenty of places to anchor. The temperatures now have dropped so that I don't need to run the generator for the air conditioning during the daytime, which is a good thing. And um, yeah, I really feel really, really bad for the people that are in the upper panhandle area from Steenhatchee down to Cedar Key, which took the, the brunt of Helene. Uh, they are just busting their butts to try and clean up down there. So that's another reason to kind of drag your feet if you're coming down this way, because those two places are going to be several months before they you can even go down there to anchor out. Um, the, even if the marina's not fixed, try to anchor out. There is so much clogged logs and trees and pieces of houses and probably cars and sunken boats that you can't get in there to anchor out. The possibilities of you running into something with your prop is probably very high. So if you're thinking, well, I'm going to go down to Steen Hatch or see the key to anchor out, it ain't going to happen. Not anytime soon. Uh, hopefully they're going to really be moving along to get things cleaned out, but it might be a few months yet. And then comes Hurricane Milton from the area down south of Tampa. Really tore them up down there. Same issue. The marinas are going to be uh, working for a while to get things cleaned up. Turns out that it wasn't 
is quite as bad as it could have been, thank God, but it's still messed up down there. So I really, my heart goes out to those people that are down in the areas that are that have just been decimated by the hurricanes. Uh, so the plan is just to hang out. And one of the things that uh, affects my videos is because I'm just sitting here on the boat for several weeks, I'm not going anywhere. There's really not much to show. So I'll check back in each week, let you know where I'm at, where my head's at on this, uh, what I'm doing. I'm going to try some fishing and what have you. But throughout the loop, once I got to Canada, I was planning on doing a, a full week video of um, maintenance things, things that you work on around the boat, things you repair, things you do, stuff like that. And every time I do one of those things, I would throw it in a folder under maintenance so that I was going to put end up putting together one whole video. Well, I've had so much video each week that I never published that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the next few weeks, take a little bit out of that folder and move it over and show you some of the things. So if you see me jumping in the water to go check my props and it's crystal clear water, obviously I'm not down here in the river because you can't see that far down in this river. Uh, I, that's That took place up in Canada. Uh, if you happen to see out my window, if I'm talking on a camera or something and I'm in a beautiful marina or something like that, or at a lock, obviously it's not here. So it's going to be little snippets. So just be aware that I may add that for the next few weeks just to get a little more filler because I'm not doing much right now. So uh, I still want to make a video each week. And so you can check back in with me to see what's going on. So thanks for joining me for coffee this morning. And uh, let's get on with the video. It's time to clean the poop tank. Oh, that hose stinks. It smells like crap. Duh. It's nice that the dock is right here. So I don't have to go crawling down the side of the boat. Fitting. The sucker hose. Oh no. Here we go. Oh yeah. I'm gonna be on the hook for a few days, a few weeks, who knows. So do it now while we're here. There's just water. Let the hose drain a little bit. So you see this thing here that's brown on the boat? It's referred to affectionately as a mustache. It's just from the water being churned up on there for miles and miles and miles, and it picks up all the sediment. And you can't wash it off. You have to use a special formula. And what Randy's going to be using is this Rust Aid by Goof Off. So we're going to—he's going to show me. He's got it in a sprayer, and he's going to show me how it works. Oh my word! That's nuts.
Yeah, I had no idea it was that easy. Just disappears. That is amazing. Wow. I need to get some of that. Well, well, there you go, folks. That's the stuff to get. So that's before and that's after. Isn't that friggin' amazing? Blown away. So some people have said to use lemon juice. So here's straight lemon juice. Right from the grocery store. Put it in a squeeze bottle. Let's see what it does. It's trying to work, but it's not really doing much. We'll let it sit a few minutes. Okay, so it's had time to almost dry, about four minutes, I think, Ben. And it's actually starting to work. It's not near as fast, and it looks like it needs to be done a few times. Um, but it's, it's working about 50%. Would I use it as a permanent fix for doing this? No. So you probably have to go over it three or four or five times. And that would take a lot of lemon juice to do the entire boat area. So I'm leaning towards sticking with what, what Randy's using. Yeah. That is just amazing. Wow. <laughs> no comparison. I think I ran over some a uh, lot of weeds that I'm covered with weeds, so I'm gonna check that. Plus I think I hit bottom also. Oh. So now's the time to check. You bet. And uh I'm from Florida, so I'm not getting in the water with a wetsuit. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Never any fun. Yeah. It's that first time in that gets you. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> is it a little cool, is it? Oh, it's freezing. It's probably about 70. Uh, I like it when it's like 90. Yeah, I bet you do. And I still wear a wetsuit. Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So that took place in Aurelia, Ontario, Canada at the marina. It was Canada Day. And I tell you what, I was wearing a wetsuit 
and it was still felt like it was 40 below. That water just took my breath away. I'm a free diver. I could hold my breath a long time. And when I went under the water, man, it was just like squeezing me going, you gotta breathe, you gotta breathe. That water's too cold. I, I couldn't handle it. I'm, I'm a wuss when it comes to cold water. Anyway, the prop was uh, good and clean. It wasn't bent or nothing. A little bit of weeds wrapped around the shaft, so all good there. So next up, it's time to clean the strainer. So let's get down to the engine room. Next thing on the list is the strainers. The strainers that strain the water that comes up under the boat that circulates through the cooling system of the heat exchangers of the engines. I've been going over lots of weeds lately, so I'm sure there's plenty of weeds in there. So I've got to pull those apart and clean those out. That's always fun. Okay, let's pull these apart. Now, most boats you have to turn off this valve down here where the water comes up from under the boat. But my water level of my boat is right about here, about an inch from the, actually I take that back, it's about an inch from the top of this. So I can actually open this up with the valve still open. As long as I'm resting still in a, in a marina. So I want to lift this up. The water level is down to right about here. So I don't have to worry about closing my valve off while I'm doing this quickly. If I was doing more maintenance, I'd close it off, of course, that way if the boat leaned or something. But it's still, bottom line is, this is the water level of the boat. So it's not going to go above this. All right, reach in here and grab the strainer. All right, there's the strainer. And there's that much weeds in there. This is nice that it's fresh water. I don't have to get salt water or everything. That's why this is all green from salt water. This is all bronze or brass. And so when you pull this out, you drip salt water on it and it immediately turns everything as patina green color. Not much you can do about it. Oh, that smells good. Whew. That stuff in there has been rotting I guess for the past few weeks oh smells nasty so let me get the other one and take them outside and empty them out and clean. Okay, put one in here and one over here. Snug. All right. Let's 
So this um, little chrome valve you see on top, or stainless steel valve you see on top, is something I added for salt water so that what I can do is I have a quick connect I can plug on here with a garden hose and then I open this valve up and I turn the garden hose on full blast and it flushes water down here throughout the whole system and blows it um, through whatever hole a blade is open on the water pump and let it sit there just kind of go for a little bit and it flushes out the salt water out of the system so if I'm letting my boat sit for like uh, you know a few weeks or a month or something in salt water I plug it in and flush the salt water through it or excuse me flush the salt water out of it so just anything to help works really great well I'm taking my morning walk and then I think we're gonna wrap up and and get out of here uh, we'll be heading actually just heading we're not gonna head south we're gonna actually head a little bit north and uh, get on the hook for probably a week or two or maybe even three I'm not sure so I think this is all I have for you for this week's episode again thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.